Of all the people involved in the horror of Grenfell Tower, there is one group at the centre of it all from whom we have not yet heard. The firefighters who were actually in the building at the height of the inferno. One of them is Damien McGee, a London fireman for 20 years. This weekend he's off to another firefighter's wedding with colleagues who were also in Grenfell Tower. He's spoken exclusively to Sky News about the horrors that confronted them in the small hours of Wednesday morning. When we got there, we were coming over the Westway. We could see it miles in the distance. Um, we were hoping and praying that it was a, a building site, that it was a new build under construction that was going up, because it just, it, how could this possibly be? We just couldn't believe what we were seeing. No, no one on the truck, everybody was just in shock. And we were miles and miles away. We realised what, we what we were heading into. Once they were inside the tower, the human cost became clear. I had no idea how many people had got out by that stage, how many people were trapped. What I can tell you was the screaming, children screaming and other residents in the block. But particularly, I can remember one kid's voice that I could, was sticking out higher pitched than all the other voices, screaming, screaming for help. And that's, and I, they probably had some sort of hope when they seen all the fire brigade down there, like you would do for us to get in and help them. In unprecedented temperatures and cloying, acrid smoke, the crews battled to exhaustion. What I seen was when they were coming downstairs, they were nearly on fire. They were in bits or completely exhausted and they were done in. I mean, the temperatures were killing them. Um, in a lot of cases, these crews were going upstairs without any firefighting media. Now, anyone who's seen the television shows has seen that that whole building was completely engulfed in flame. We were all inside that building. And a lot of times, the crews, that, the ones that were there initially and the crews that ahead of me were upstairs going into floors without any water simply just looking around and just try, trying to do their best, banging on doors and kicking in doors and trying to get people out. Even those that firefighters did manage to rescue brought with them stomach-churning news. A little boy, we had a little boy who came downstairs with, a, with his mother who was in a very bad way and he seemed sort of OK and very, very shocked and calm. Lovely little fella, probably about five years old. And we asked, we need to know what flat were you in, what number flat were you in? Is there anyone else in that flat? Because we're sending crews in there. And he's turned around, he's looked at me, he says, my brother, but he's dead. So. This five-year-old boy knew that his brother was dead? Yeah, he said, yeah. We asked him, is anyone else in their flats, anyone in the family, is anyone else in the flats? And he said, just my brother, but he's dead now. You're a 20 years served professional fire officer. When a little boy tells you that, what, what goes through your mind? It breaks your heart a little bit. Yeah, it's very sad, it's, it's horrific. I just, you feel useless and helpless. We're there. I know that they're looking at us to save them. Everybody is. You know, we're here now, we'll save you, but, I mean, it's not saying it's unfair on us, but, I mean, we were put in a situation where we, I mean, people need to know where we can't, you know what I mean, why ladders don't go that high. The fire crews needed the help of police to get in and out of the building as it burned on. I'd like to say a big massive thank you to the Metropolitan Police who did an absolutely amazing job protecting us from that building that was falling down on our heads and all around us and so many of them were hit time and again with massive lumps of debris and metal and the composites and it looked to me like concrete was falling off the top of the building which it probably was and that was bombing down all around us and so many people get smashed to pieces of that nevertheless running back and forwards back and forwards and through that with casualties and with people without their selfless efforts many of those who did survive would not have done so but for some of the firefighters in the tower, there is a feeling of failure. All the firefighters that were there were going to be killing themselves, wishing that we could have done more because of the amount of people that we've lost. And not only that, because we see some of them. Like we watched families die. Well, I mean, yeah, I watched, I watched people die. And I would do anything if I could go back. I would probably think, well, I'll do this a bit different, I'll do that a bit different. You know, I would break the rules more than what I would have done. I would have grabbed a set and I would have ran up there and I would have done this and that. But, yeah, there's a, there's a few things that I, yeah, that I wish that I would probably have done or could have done more. But essentially, I mean, that was a tower in a fire. Many of the fire crews at the scene, as the blaze tore through the building, still do not feel comfortable speaking about it. What they saw will stay with them for the rest of their lives. David Bowden, Sky News.